All right. Looks like I'm now on Facebook waiting to be live on Instagram. All right. Welcome, welcome to day one of Curate Your Signature Offer event. My name is Judy Weber, and I'm so, so excited that you're here. Um, I am live streaming on Zoom. If you are like, hey, I registered, where is the link? Go to your email, check your promotions folders and your spam folders. Ladies, this is going to be an amazing week together. What a wonderful way to start a new week, right? Say hello, whether you're here with me live on Instagram or on Facebook or here on Zoom, please in the chat, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. And I really would love you to answer this question. Um, what are you most excited about learning this week when it comes to offers? And I might even ask you to put in the chat, what are, what is your offer? You know, I, I know I have a bunch of realtors following me, so I know that you sell real estate, but did you ever think about what do I do differently that others just don't do, Right. Is there anything? A lot of times you think no, but there is. And, and so you do have unique offers, even in something that is as specific as real estate, for example. And I have a bunch of coaches that follow me and other experts, service providers, things like that. I would love to know what you what you do and what your offer is. OK, so type that in the chat. I would really appreciate that. Well, over the course of our five days together this week, my goal and my prayer is that you get so much value here that it's more than what you've gotten in the last couple of things that you've actually paid for, okay? That's my goal. It's a lofty one, but I've done it before and I expect that God will show up and allow me to do it again. But here's my promise this week to you. If you implement everything that I'm gonna be sharing with you, and it's a lot, right? But I try to make it as simplified and easily digestible as possible. But if you implement you are going to get strict strategies and tactics and mindset work. And if you do the work, I promise that your life and your business will change forever. And to God be all glory. Okay. Are you up for the challenge? Are you ready? Give me some emojis. Give me some love. Let me know that you are excited. All right. I want to pop in to do just a quick admin things before we dive into the substance. Okay. First of all, if this is the first time we've met. My name is Judy Weber. I am a women's business strategist. So I think there's a guy watching. God bless. Uh, you're welcome to watch, but I do not service men. I um, am a former Philadelphia trial lawyer and C-suite executive turned successful serial entrepreneur. And I help go get her high achieving women of faith, build and scale their business with strategy and systems. And yes, simplicity. OK, so that is who I am. And daily, what's going to be happening, I'm going to be going live here at 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to be streaming every day on my Facebook business page at Judy Weber Co. here on Instagram at Judy Weber Co. Um, but if you'd like to join us live on Zoom, and it's more fun to participate that right that way. Right. And you're able to have a two way Q&A with me at the end. Plus, if you register, you get an incredible, beautiful 19 page workbook. That, so the link is there in the Instagram, the bio. Um, I'm going to put it here in the caption as well. Uh, last thing I want to say in the way of admin stuff is engage, engage, engage. Okay. You're going to be getting some uh, op opportunities to win prizes for engaging and participating, but you've got to be here with me live. You've got to do the work. Um, but there's going to be some amazing prizes, including a 50% scholarship to my upcoming packaging, pricing, and messaging intensive, which is an eight-week program. It's a beta where I'm going to be working directly with 20 ladies. I'm going to help you curate, finesse, and begin to actually sell your signature high ticket offer. And later this week, I'll be telling you more about this very special opportunity. But the work you do here with me inside this free event will begin this all important momentum that will continue for those of you who say yes inside the intensive. Listen, my private clients are already seeing massive results from digging in to my methodology. And I look forward to rolling up my sleeves inside that intensive to help you create and generate consistent five-figure months with your signature offer, fully dialed in, optimized for your target audience, and so much more. I'm going to talk about that later. So today, we're talking about signature offers, right? It's not just any old offer. Rather, this is going to be what you're going to become known for. This is you are the expert, right? This is your very 
own way of doing things, your proprietary methodology. And yes, I'm a lawyer. So, you know, I don't have time to share with you everything, but, you know, hint, hint, we're going to be putting together your way of doing things. So you need to get your system trademarked. Okay. So it's protected and other people can't steal from you. Okay. So, so important. Um, all right. This is going to be something, your signature offer, something that, that no one else can offer. No one else can provide. No one else can teach. Why? Because it's yours and yours alone. And so I want to refer you to my podcast. It's called She is Extraordinary. And episode 164 of my podcast released a, a week or two ago is all about some tough love about your offers. Okay. It's the typical mistakes I see after working with hundreds of female entrepreneurs and small business owners. Okay. Now I want to briefly go through these mistakes, but I really would love you to listen to episode 164 of the She is Extraordinary podcast for more details. But I want to put right up front before we begin some of the biggest mistakes that I see women make when it comes to offers. Okay. First, they don't have a clearly laid out offer. They can't explain it. So your audience doesn't even know that it exists, or if they kind of sort of know about it, they really have no idea what it is and why they need it, right? How it could help them. Another mistake is that um, you keep changing it up. You launched one offer and it didn't really, you know, work in your estimation, right? And so you try another one and then you launch that but you're not super happy about that. So then you launch another one and so on and so on. This is a big mistake because you keep changing it up. So your people really don't know kind of what you're doing and how you're doing it and why they should be, you know, looking at you for this information that you can't wait to get in their hands. You keep changing it up. Please don't do that. Okay. Another big mistake is some of you aren't even making offers, right? Like you have an offer there. But oh, and if you're joining on Zoom, could you please mute yourself? I so appreciate that. Um, all righty. Okay. Thank you for that, ladies. We need a nice, clean line. All right. Um, if, if you have an offer and you're not like presenting it wherever you're showing up for your audience, what a shame, right? Um, or maybe you are mentioning it here or there, but you're not talking about it enough. Why? Because so many of you tell me you're afraid. Hey, don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't fear. Okay. But you're telling me I'm afraid that I'm beating them over the head with this, that I'm bothering them, that, that I'm being pushy or salesy. No, 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 no. How are people going to know you exist and what you do if you don't tell them? And people have a very short attention span anymore. So you need to repeat and repeat and repeat what you do and specifically what your signature offer is, because that offer is the bread and butter of your business, okay? As in, you can't skip this part, okay? And you can't fake it, okay? Because your signature offer is exclusive to you and it gets crazy good results for your clients, right? And so as a result of all that, it ain't cheap, okay? In fact, if you know me and you listen to my podcast, you know that in my opinion, you should be selling your signature offer at a premium, AKA high ticket, okay? And the high ticket revenue model provides the three things that you dreamed about when you started your business, like why you went into business in the first place, okay? And those things are simplicity, freedom, and profitability. Can I get an amen on those three? I mean, business is about helping people and through the helping, you're making money, value for value, okay? Simplicity, you never envisioned, I don't think, working harder than ever before, going at it for 12 hours a day every day. Did you? I don't think so. Freedom, time freedom. You said, I'm going to work for myself. I only answer to me. Time is our most precious resource. So I'm sure you look for that freedom, right? And then the third thing, profitability, aka financial freedom, right? So I, you know, this is limited time together. So besides episode 164 inside the She is Extraordinary podcast, I want you to listen to episode 159. 159 talks specifically about the high ticket revenue model and why you really should be thinking about incorporating that in your business. And again, it's not to make things harder. It is to simplify, okay? And open up time in your day 
so that you can actually serve your clients better and still have time to do things that really matter to you. Okay. All right. Hope this is resonating. If you've just popped on, please tell me in the chat where you're watching from, what you're most excited about learning. Okay. Before we dive in um, to today's topic, which is how to create an offer that your ideal client will find absolutely irresistible, I want to briefly review the workbook. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen and let me see who's in the chat here. Um, Karen, I help families find their forever home. Awesome. 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 Beautiful. Okay. Let me go to, okay. Ladies who are watching me here, I've got to find the right tab here. All right. Karen, Catherine, Claire, can you tell me if you see my screen that says curate your signature offer workbook? Can you give me a thumbs up or in the chat say yes so that I know? Let's see. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Karen. Okay. All right. Isn't this beautiful? My team did a beautiful, beautiful job. Okay. On this workbook, 19 pages of goodness. Um, I love that picture and see the Bible sitting next to me. God is all over the business. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that on page three has the full schedule. Okay. Every day at 9 a.m. It has some important reminders along with the Zoom link and the fact that we are going to do replays inside my Facebook business page every day. I don't know the time, but it will pop up. Um, my schedule varies. So I just wanted you to know that the videos will be available on my Facebook business page at Judy Weber Co., but only through next Tuesday at midnight. Okay. Um, I also want to take you to the back of the workbook. I don't want to make you dizzy here, but I'm taking you to page 17. And this is so important. It's a graphic of me holding the Bible in my hand, not a graphic, it's a picture of me. Um, hey, Marie, glad you could join, hun. Holding the Bible, laughing, joy. Joy is a hallmark of business for me. And, and for everything that you do um, as you do your business God's way. So what I have is a couple of words that I just really want you to focus on, ladies, as you're working with me inside this week's event, that as you approach your business, I want you to approach it with a hopeful expectation. I want you to approach it with faith. Yesterday, I had an amazing encounter that I'm going to tell you about later this week, but I had an amazing encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ as I was working through mindset. There are so many women out there that are struggling with imposter syndrome, with overthinking, with being distracted, with not believing in what they're doing, not believing in themselves. And you know how I feel about that. We don't have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe in the Lord God Almighty and his work in us. See, and that is faith. And so I'm going to be telling you about this amazing um, good word that the Lord gave to me and, and has truly like unlocked um, some major stumbling blocks and mindset blocks that I have been having. Okay. So, so stay tuned for that, but you need to approach every day in your business with hopeful expectation, with faith, with joy, with courage, with boldness and confidence, even if you don't feel it now. Because feelings don't matter. How many times in the Bible did God say, you know, it's not about your feelings. It's about being obedient, right? It's about trusting me. And he tells us time and time again, 365 times, do not fear. So I really want you to almost like print out that page and maybe um, kind of replace it with a picture of you having fun in your business. Your, your business should be fun, okay? Let us go to God in prayer. And then we will come back and continue. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for how you're moving, um, how you're moving right now in this presentation, how you're moving in each of these beautiful ladies' lives and in their businesses. Lord God, we want you to show up big time. We need you here, Lord. We can't do anything of any importance without you. So, God, you know, I've prepared but I am open to you. I am your vessel, Lord. So if there is something that you know that a beautiful woman that's here live or will be listening to the replay needs to hear, Lord, take over. Take over, God. We love you and we trust you. And um, just thank you for all that you are, all that you've done, and all that you have yet to do. We trust you. Thank you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. 
Okay. Okay. So there are two ways to create um, an irresistible offer or rather two keys that you need. So I think I'm going to, it's going to be, um, I think better for me to go to the workbook. So I want to make sure we're on the same page here. Okay. So there are two keys to creating an irresistible offer. The first is, and I want you to open up your chat and tell me what you think it is. What do you think is a key to creating a truly irresistible offer? Any ideas? Duh. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. I know there's a delay. Okay. You know what it is? The first one, and this is the most important thing, your ideal client. The key to creating an irresistible offer is being obsessed. Yes, that's not an overstatement. Obsessed with your ideal client. Why? Okay, because that's who we're serving. And what I see in the way of mistakes is we're experts. We know what we're doing, right? Whether we're a coach, whether we're a service provider, whatever it is, we're very good at what we do. No doubt about that. So sometimes we can get ahead of ourselves and think that we know what our ideal client needs when we haven't even asked them. Oh, and by the way, too many are in business and haven't yet identified specifically their ideal client. Now, if you're about to shut off now, um, I'm going to go like this so that you see me. I'm waving my hands. Okay. It's important. Just pay attention. You can't skip this. If you don't know your ideal client, and if you think you're serving everybody and that's to their benefit, you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Because if you are talking to everybody or attempting to, nobody's listening. They just don't, they don't have time. They, 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 didn't even, they don't even see you because you are blending in because you are generic, you are not talking to them at all, they're scrolling, and you know what, because you didn't say the right thing, or because you aren't um, otherwise showing them that you know who the heck they are, and calling them out, and speaking to their pain, and speaking to their needs, they don't see you, okay, so when I say this, rest assured, if you're resisting me, I've been there, and because I've been there and resisted it, it took me a heck of a lot longer to get my business going. Now, I've been in business since 2003, way before like the internet or Facebook and all this other stuff, right? Um, but business is still business. So at the end of the day, success in business is all about connecting, right? Talking to people. So please don't get, uh, this is a digression, but it's important. Please don't overhype social media in your marketing, okay? You don't have to have super pretty graphics, the perfect font, the perfect colors, okay? If you are spending countless hours curating one post, you're wasting your time. It's a bold statement. I firmly believe it. The best thing you can do to build your business is connect to people. Reach out, have conversations. And I'm not talking about necessarily DMs, although that's certainly a part of it. Pick up the phone, have conversations, care about people, okay? And in the way of an ir irresistible offer, the first key to creating that is having an ideal client specifically like one person. And later we're going to talk about the power of one. It's that important. If you are talking to everybody and you're like, oh, I don't want to miss, uh, have her miss out. And I don't want her to feel left out. You're, you're killing your business and you're not helping anybody. You can have more than one ideal client, but before you um, move on to the second one, you've got to fully understand the first. Okay. So that means what is her name? 
Tell me about her. Is she married or single? Does she have kids? What kind of house does she live in? What kind of car does she drive? Where does she shop? What podcast does she listen to? Do, what social platforms does she love? What social platforms does she hate? What are her joys? What are her burdens? When it comes to what you do, what does she love about the industry? What does she hate about it? Where is she stuck? All these different things. What are her deepest desires? What are her deepest fears? You have to know her that deep. And the only way you're going to do that is by deciding that you will choose one person. You will understand her like crazy and you will go all in on her and you will serve her or him or them. Like if it's a family. Okay. Trust me on this. So you see on page four of the workbook here, I'm asking you. Describe your ideal client in detail. Okay. And I've done other podcasts on this. So one last thing I want to say on this. If you aren't getting specific, if you are trying to be that generalist to, to throw out that wide net and you think that's, that's going to bring in more leads, I can tell you it is doing the exact opposite. A uh, quick example for me. I'm in the midst of a pivot. I work with high achieving women of faith who are looking to scale, not looking to start. Going forward, I will only work with women who are established in business, already generating six figures or close to it. And I'm going to get them to the multi six and approaching the seven figure mark. But here's the thing. When I implement that. And when my new website launches and, and all of that, right? When I come out with the revised me, Judy Weber Co., I have no doubt that I will be getting people who, women who are on the beginning stages of their business. Why? Because they will stretch up. They will see that I have valuable information that they can glean from and learn from. So some of those may stretch themselves to be able to come work with me and work with that caliber of woman. That's one thing. Second thing, when I up level and implement this and work with those and, and kind of up level everything I'm doing, I'm going to be generating more dollars. And so that will open up more time. And I'll talk about that as we go forward this week. And because the revenue is going to be coming in even more than it is now and my time, I'll be able to reclaim because of the things that I'm doing on the back end with my team and all of that, that opens up opportunities for me to serve and offer scholarships for those maybe that are, um, you know, stuck at $50,000, stuck at Five thousand a month, right? And want to get to the ten, the fifteen, the twenty. But hear me on this, ladies. You need to know the one that you're talking to. That is absolutely critical to creating a truly irresistible offer. Okay, because okay, I said one last thing, but here's one more. Besides the demographics and the psychographics that I just went through. You need to connect with these people in your ideal client target audience because you need to know intimately their pains and their desires. I alluded to that earlier, but I really want to emphasize that. In order for you to create an irresistible offer, you need to know what the heck's wrong. And you need to put it in their language. What you think they need, what you th how you think they will describe it, Okay, great. That's a great place to start, but you've got to confirm it. And you can only do that by talking with them. Okay, so I hope I make the point. Does that make sense? Let me briefly see if I can come to the chat here in, um, well, it's not working. I can't open the chat. I'm sorry. I will come back to it when I'm done sharing my screen. Okay, well, there it is. Now it's popped up. Let me see. Thank you for your indulgence here. Um, yes, Catherine says, know their pain point. Okay, very, very good. And Karen says, amen. All right, so you're getting this. Great, great, great. Okay. And so the second key to developing a truly irresistible offer is your methodology. Your methodology. Okay, so I'm going to stop the share so I can go back to my notes. And I want to give you an example. 
I have created a methodology for my up-leveling of the brand. You may have seen it because I actually talked about it at one of my recent Thriver Thursday lives, but I haven't like put it out there yet because it's not, I'm not at that point yet. But I think it's helpful for me to go through what my methodology is, how it came to be, so that you can put yours together too, okay? So my methodology is called the Joyful Scaling Method. And joy is all caps, the Joyful Scaling Method, okay? So as I pivot to work with these established and seasoned women business owners, I went to the Lord and I asked him, Lord, I want to teach women how to scale their businesses to get to that next level. How can I do it in a way that is unique in the marketplace? I can't do this alone. I mean, I'm smart. God gave me a brain, but the only reason I have a brain in my creativity, right, is because God gave it to me. Okay. And I wanted to incorporate these gifts that he gave me along with my personal life experience and my business experience that he blessed me with. So I thought about it a lot and I prayed a lot. So let's get specific. What am I talking about? First and foremost, for me, when I was thinking about, okay, what am I going to, how, what is my methodology going to look like? First and foremost, for me, Jesus Christ is my everything. Hallelujah. Right. In him and through him and with him, all things are possible. Even things that the world says is impossible, quote unquote, right. Or something, oh, that's unreasonable or, oh, that's not likely. Okay. Like building a six and seven figure business, right? Not too many do. The stat is between six and 12% of people will ever create a six uh, figure business. So if you're there, congrats, that's huge. It's quite an accomplishment. And I think the latest stat is 2%, only 2% of entrepreneurs will ever get to the seven figure mark. So that's pretty unlikely, right? But as Christians, in my estimation, we can't believe that. We've got to have faith and pursue the impossible. That's the hashtag, pursue the impossible. It's one of my mantras, Ta-da, right? Are we really going to walk the talk or are we going to play small? Okay, so those are the things. Okay, so Jesus Christ is first and foremost in me and how I do everything. So of course it's going to be huge in my business, right? What else about me as I was thinking and praying about my methodology? I thought, okay, what am I? I am strategic. I am a lawyer. I am used to you know, having been presented a case that was potentially a loser and I have to strategize, okay, what's the hook? How can I? So I'm very strategic. I'm a thinker, okay? Um, And what I find lacking in so many women is that they do things just because some supposed guru said to do it, like posting on social platforms all day long, right? But I believe that critical thinking is necessary. It's a necessary skill for a successful, thriving CEO to get to that six figure and certainly get to the seven figure mark, right? It's got to be strategically thought out. And so strategy and strategic thinking is a central part of my joyful scaling method, okay? What else is important to me? I hope this is uh, making sense. Let me know, okay? What else? Business, in my estimation, doesn't have to be complex, Okay, I mean, let's face it, it's not easy. And that's why only six to 12% hit six figures and only 2% make seven figures, right? But at the same time, it's not rocket science. You don't need to, um, you know, know how to split the atom to help people and make money at it, right? So for me, simplicity, a clear path, it's important to incorporate into my signature method, okay? What else? Systems, automation. I have a love-hate relationship with technology. I mean, my goodness, the only reason I'm here with you right now is by God's grace and technology, right? But, you know, even though, you know, sometimes AI makes me kind of crazy and Facebook and their algorithms and whatever else, systems and automation is so important so that you don't have to run yourself ragged in running your business, okay? It's about working smarter, not harder. And so as I thought about my methodology, it was important to me to help my clients reclaim their time because my ideal client with whom I spoke, my six-figure entrepreneur, multi-six-figure entrepreneur wanting to get to that next level, she's working way too hard. She's achieved a lot, but it's been on her back and she sacrificed a lot. Precious time with her family, taking care of herself. Okay. So systems is what I'm all about. 
Okay. So with all those things, then I thought, okay, well, what words make sense with my brand? Oh, by the way, hint, hint, I have a brand. Okay. And I'm not talking about pretty colors and fonts, and I'm not even talking about a logo or a fancy schmancy website, but rather a fully thought out brand that makes it clear to my ideal client who I am, what do I do? Who do I work with? Right. How do I do what I do differently? What's my unique approach to business? Okay. So all these things, I thought, okay, this is all important to putting my methodology together. And it all starts with my ideal client. And that's all a part of my branding. Okay. Do you see how everything comes together? So as I was thinking about words that make sense with my brand, uh, it came up with words like faith. A lot of the words I showed you earlier, belief, joy, right? We should, God calls us to joy in everything we do, even in the misery, right? Even in the tough circumstances, right? So joy, simplicity, and trust, okay? And so I played with those words to come up with an acronym that could stand for my methodology of scaling. And ultimately, I landed on joy. Now, uh, jo joy is jumpstart, like where you assess things, optimize, where you get automated, and yield is checking out the results, tracking the results, and all that good stuff, right? So joy, joyful scaling method. So my question to you ladies is, could you create an acronym as a part of your unique signature method? Now, do you have to have an acronym? No, but one goal of this whole unique signature method is that it should be memorable, easy to remember, and easily associated with your brand. And so it made sense for me, joyful scaling method. So think about that. But it took a while for me to think, wow, why? I'm thinking, what word is why that could fit into what I need to teach? So it takes some thought right? But it's still worth it. The joyful scaling method. When you think about scaling, isn't it a beautiful thing to say, Ooh, I want to do that joyfully. I want to do it with joy. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Any questions? Let me come to the chat just to see. Oh, Claire, no worries at all. Um, yes. And Karen says that's the fear losing those family moments. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. So in the workbook, step one, which is part of your homework, you know, I want you to think about and find out what is your ideal client avatars, number one, biggest, most urgent problem. And that requires that you talk to them. We're not going to be sitting in a vacuum in our own mind in a silo. We're going to pick up the phone. We're going to reach out to people and we're going to say, can we have a quick chat? Because I want to get to know you better. And I want to get to know your needs and your everything. You know, it's kind of like you can couch it as a get to know each other session. But, you know, the goal is I want to get to know them and I don't want I don't need anything else. The whole entire goal of this reach out and ultimately this call is simply to serve them, to care about them, to find out all that I can about them so that I get information that I can then write down, right, capture it, and then incorporate it as I look to create this signature offer that nobody else teaches, that nobody else has, right? Because you want to write down their words. Because remember, you're speaking to her or him or them, as the case may be, okay? Then that's step one. Like you're going to think about what are the pains? And then you're going to pick the biggest pain. As I talk to three or four or five or 10 people over the course of the next several days and weeks, what's the number one urgent need? The big, big problem that they, that they are desperate to solve. Okay. You want to identify that one. Okay. The power of one, one ideal client, one pain one big pain, one big problem they have to fix. Okay, that's step one in putting that, this amazing irresistible signature offer together. Then step two is mapping out milestones. You know, what do they have to do to achieve the transformation, to get from where they are to where they wanna be? So I wanna share my screen again. 
Um, okay. So do, 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 do. let's get these beautiful faces out of the way here. Um, all right. Can someone tell me that is here with me live on Zoom? Can you see my screen? It should say A and B. If you can see that, would you please raise your hand or let me know, please? Let's open this up. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, ladies. All right. So when I'm talking about your milestones, you might say, oh gosh, how many? Well, I have three milestones in my joyful scaling method. And I told you what those were. Jumpstart, optimize, yield. There's no magic to those words. There's, there's not a perfect formula to have three. Maybe you have five, maybe you have six. But I wanted to show you this graphic to really, uh, if you're like me, you, you learn by visual. So I'm sorry if you're watching on Instagram, like I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, but so A is where they are right now, where who is right now, your ideal client. This is where they sit with that big, big problem, a bunch of problems, right? A bunch of issues, a bunch of struggles, but also a bunch of joys that you are well aware of. But as it relates to your signature offer, that one urgent need you're going to fill. That's A. And B is ta-da, the transformation after you help them solve that big urgent need, that big problem. And I drew the bridge, this, this curved line from A to B, because this is the journey on the transformation from where they are, A, to where they want to go, solving that big problem. And so when I say identify your milestones, you can even draw this out and think, hmm, what has to happen to get them from where they are now to solving the problem, right? And so I drew five lines here, but for me, there's three. There's the jump start. The jump start is assessing two key things, marketing and sales. That's what I've determined is necessary for the jump start and the assessment to get from six figures to multi six figures and approach seven, right? And there's a whole bunch of different things under that, but a major milestone for me is the jump start. Then the next major milestone is optimized because the jump starts all about identifying issues and strategically filling the gaps. Uh, you know, what, what strategic plan is gonna happen in the way of marketing and sales to get me to that next level? So that first milestone for me is jumpstart. So after they have the strategy, then what comes next? You're just thinking through method, you know, um, logically. For me, it was optimized. Now we have the strategy. Now what are we going to do? We're going to optimize everything we're doing. Because to me, that was the next big milestone. So this is in the way of team building. Uh, we're going to optimize our team, everything we're doing. We're going to optimize in the way of processes, um, in the way of automation. Okay, that was optimized. And then for me, the final huge pillar, the milestone was yield. Now that we have the strategy and we know how to optimize, optimize and implement those strategies, the next and final step is how are we going to track it? What are our KPIs, what are we going to be looking at? What numbers are we going to evaluate and, and all that and how we are going to, um, you know, take what we've done, the hard work of strategy and, 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 and the action and evaluate how we're doing. And then it's just a matter of rinse and repeat all the way around. But that took some time. But do you see how you don't have to overcomplicate it? Okay. And then later I'll explain, you know, with each of these major milestones, be they three, be they four, five, six, whatever, I wouldn't go over six, maybe seven, but I want you to think streamlined major milestones to get you from A to B. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So that's it for today. And, but that's a lot, right? And, and, and so I don't want you to be um, overwhelmed and think, oh my gosh, this is too much. I'm done. <laughs> this is like overwhelming. No, 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 no. Okay. Another kind of digression, but it's important. You get to decide, sister, whether you be overwhelmed or not. You get to decide. 
Don't anybody tell you that you don't. When that feeling of, oh my God, this project is too much. And I'm sure that's happened if you've been in business for any period of time. You can freak out for like 30 seconds, maybe up to two minutes, okay? But then here's what I did just the other day when I was crying a couple of weeks ago. I pushed myself back from my desk. I took a breath. I looked up and prayed. And then I thought. And then I rolled up my sleeves and said, thank you, Jesus, for the encouragement. And away I went. And a lot of great work got done because I decided I am not going to be overwhelmed. I can figure this out. Okay. And how do you do it? You take it one chunk at a time. So let's go back to our workbook. So the homework, I want, I want you to figure out what is your ideal client's most urgent problem. And if you haven't ever talked to them, I mean, if you're brand new, then you start with what you think their problem is, but get it on the calendar to, you know, I want you to time block, okay, when am I going to identify, you know, online or, you know, in my local area, I want to talk to people who I think fit my ICA, my ideal client avatar. Okay. So think it through. Who do you really want to work with? Then when you have that dialed in, as I talked about earlier, then I want you to um, think about their biggest problem and talk to them and confirm that you're right because you may be surprised. And then when you are ready, this may not all happen this week, but I'm giving you the step-by-step -step to figure it out, okay? So step two would be um, map out those milestones that we just talked about. Think a big picture. There's a lot to get from you know six figures to seven figures, but in my methodology, there's only three milestones. OK, so what steps must your person take to get from where they are to where they want to go? So you'll see in the workbook on page six, and this happens every single day, I have space for you to write your key takeaway. Key takeaway is so important, ladies. Oh, my goodness. You can listen till the cows come home. You can watch videos. You can listen to podcasts. But if you don't kind of think back on the day and say, what is my biggest key takeaway from today? And it could be. I've got to define my ideal client. It could be, I need to create my signature offer and I'm going to take the next, you know, two months to do that or whatever. You identify what your biggest takeaway is and write it down. I think the stat is you improve on um, actually, you know, taking action and having a difference in your life. And that begins with writing it down. If you write down what you want to do, or what um, you've learned, you're 90% more likely to take action on it and actually do something with that information, right? Transformation is what it's all about, not information. And then if you're getting really, um, you know, feeling great about this work, then begin to think about and brainstorm ideas of names for your signature methodology. And I mentioned earlier, possibly an acronym, okay? This is all fun. Remember what I said? I'm going to scroll back. Hope I don't get you dizzy. This is how we do business God's way. With hopeful expectation, with confidence and joy and courage. He's going to show up. We need to go to him a lot, right? At least once a day. Okay. So that's why also every day I have your CEO action item. This is something that I have um, identified as a priority from the day's training. And you see that today I'm talking about connecting every day with your ideal client. I love phone calls. I love connect calls. You can also connect by reaching out and having an actual conversation in the DMs. Okay. But there is nothing better than a phone call or a Zoom. Right. So, I want to open it up to chat here. Karen says, how do I turn this into real estate clients? I know who my ideal client is. Um, well, let me say this. A couple, that's a really great question, okay? Your ideal client in real estate, so many agents, like, can you tell me, Karen, who your ideal client is just briefly so that I can better address this specifically? But the great thing about real estate is the nature of your work is 
that you have a high ticket revenue business model. Because even if you're selling homes like in the high ones and the twos, you're probably making several thousand dollars each transaction, right? And I hope you've negotiated a great split so that it's really, really good. Okay, so you're focusing on women 40 to 60 years old. Okay, excellent. So when we're thinking about your offer, um, you know, I would ask you to get even more specific and say, oh, empty nesters. Okay, so are you going after the listing side or the buyer side? And divorce, that's awesome. Okay, so all of your marketing needs to talk to them specifically. What are they thinking about? Like their biggest fear is, I would think that one of their biggest fears, because I'm in that demographic, I'm 55, I'm not currently divorced, but I had gone through a divorce, but I am an empty nester and I'm lonely. Okay, good, you're going after listings. And so what are they concerned about? They're concerned about maintaining a good lifestyle for the rest of their life, right? So when it comes to their home, they're thinking, oh my goodness, okay. Um, they may be wondering if this is where they should stay, depending how big the house is. Should I sell now? Should I hold on? Where's the market going? You need to be the biggest resource for them possible. And I can't imagine there's anybody that's really diving deep for them. And wherever you show up, be it in a weekly newsletter or a day or a weekly live or YouTube channel or however you show up for them. And you need to find out where they will want to see you. Do they want to see you on a podcast? Do they want to watch video? Do they want to um, see you in their inbox? How do they, do they want to see you live somewhere in a seminar? Right. Um, but you want to show up for them and determine, you know, what these big problems are identify the biggest one and address it in the offer, you know? So if their biggest problem is how to um, maximize their current um, home sale price, right? They're, what they're going to get out of the house, their equity um, and knowing whether they should buy now, you know, move now or hold. But there's also talking about, gosh, you know, do I need to talk to a financial planner? And, um, you know, what are some other things in their life? So could you imagine, could you just imagine, Karen, if you team up, not only with the team, quote unquote, that you already have in the real estate world, but if you become the go-to resource for amazing financial planners, also that cater to this niche and see what other needs and concerns they have, you know, maybe they need a travel agent for the fun in their life, someone that caters specifically to them. See, this is what I'm talking about, where for you, it is a little bit different real estate. It's a little bit different than service providers. Yes, you want to help them find joy. That's excellent. Okay, Karen, great idea you said. Oh, good, I'm glad this is helping. So when you put together this offer, and I use the term a bit looser for you in the way of, you know, ultimately you're selling real estate, but when you present yourself to your community and specifically your ideal client within that local community because you're a hyper local business um you're going to be talked about and you know client by client you know people know people and that is how you build your business so you can kind of go through these same points um and and think creatively how can i use this now um i have clients who are have put together um like courses right for those, you know, that are thinking about, you know, maybe not this demographic, but but maybe um, those like investors and then they put together like a side course, things like that, um, that may or may not be something that you're interested in. We could talk about that going forward. So give some thought to that. But the high ticket is exactly what you're doing, but zeroing in specifically on that ideal client and their pain points and addressing them like nobody else in your market, you're going to stand out. Maybe a webinar for women. Beautiful. And what would you cover? Do you think those women would appreciate a virtual um, event or a live event, like maybe on a Saturday or maybe on an evening or maybe a lunch and learn? I don't know all these different ways. Find out for them. What information do you need? How can I help you? Um, and not just in real estate, but in your lifestyle, right? So I hope that was helpful. Okay. So Chastity says, can a person define their ICA too much? Oh, wow. That is a beautiful question. Oh my gosh. My answer is no. And I know you came in late, Chastity. Great, great question. Uh, in the online space in particular, 
And I know that you and I chatted by God's grace. It was so much fun getting to know you a little bit. And I understand your consulting business. And so your clients could literally be around the world. So the online space is where you are. And the online space is getting super, super crowded, especially with COVID and people having to pivot, losing their jobs and or thinking, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I want to be in charge, right? So because of the market that's becoming more and more you know, saturated, regardless of industry, it's even more important that you become this specialist, okay? If you're a generalist, um, it's just not gonna, you're, you're gonna be lost. You're gonna be lost among the masses. So the more defined, the more specific your ideal client is, and the better you know this person, whether it's a man, woman, or a group of, you know, like a family, or I know for you, it's um, a particular person who has this vocation, who has these goals, whatever, right? The more you define them, you know, are they early in their um, mission or are they more established, for example, right? And, and in the way of ministry, um, you know, what is their, their passion with respect to that ministry? Like what drives them? The more you can define that, don't worry about, oh my goodness, is the market like big enough? Are there enough of them? You can do your research, right? Think about who do I really want to work with? Maybe even those that you've already worked with that you like, gosh, if I could have 50 more or hundred more of these, it would be wonderful. Then figure out kind of who are they, man or woman? It doesn't matter. Maybe for you, it doesn't matter, but, but what does matter in the way of their demographics, in their psychographics, what they think, um, what's really important to them in the way of the of what they're doing in the way of their ministry and get really specific and then talk to more people like them. And that will either confirm that you're, bar you're barking up the right tree or barking up the wrong tree. But you've had the experience to really um, begin to understand really and define who is that person that makes you just want to tear off the covers in the morning and get to work, right? Oh, good. I'm glad that makes sense. Okay, ladies, so we've done a lot of work. We spent almost an hour together. So take a breath and I want you to really praise God for, um, for us coming together. And I love you and I'm here for you. So here's the thing. I would love for you to do some work. There's a lot of things you could do. And even in the workbook, there's like, oh my gosh, there's four things I need to do. And I've got all this other stuff to do today. And then, okay, we're gonna decide not to be overwhelmed. I want you to pick one, pick one of all the different things that I have in the workbook related to day one, pick one, give some deeper thought to your ideal client. Who are they? And all those specifics we talked about today, or think about your methodology. And of course, to do that, you really, that goes back to your ideal client because we want to address their number one pain. Maybe that's what you want to focus on today. You want to reach out to five people that are in your ideal client audience and schedule some time. Maybe you can chat today. Maybe you can schedule time later in the week or maybe next week or whatever, but, but pick one thing out of many and decide I'm not going to be overwhelmed. I just won't because you see, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? How do you build a business? One step at a time, one action at a time. Always going to the Lord God for guidance. Okay, so we're going to end in prayer. Um, but what I'd love you to do is to pick one thing on the day one of all the things you could possibly do. Pick one. And then I would love for you to um, take a snapshot of your work, whether it be on the workbook itself or whether it be in a Word document or a Google document or you know wherever you wanna do it, I want you to snap a picture of it and share it with on social. Uh, and I want you to tag me at Judy Weber Co, whether it's on Instagram or whether it's on Facebook, okay? And you can of course post it inside my Faith Fuel Business Facebook group if you like, but you don't have to. Um, but I want us to be bold. The Faith Fuel Business Facebook group is private. So if you don't want to put these thoughts out in public, that's the perfect place to do it. But I really want you to think about God put me here for a purpose. And if you're watching me now or listening to me now, there is no doubt in my mind that the Lord God has, has you doing this for a reason, that, that he wants you to move forward on this in a big way, trusting him. 
So with everything you're doing, I want you to decide with, with courage. I want you to take courageous action. And I want you to begin to think no more playing small. I'm going all in. I'm going all in because I have a big God, the one true God who is all powerful, all knowing, all loving. Hallelujah. And so I am not going to let the enemy take me off course. No more. I'm going to stay on course, hyper-focus, trusting him like never before. I'm going big. I'm no longer going to look around and compare and see, oh, she's doing and what they're doing. And uh uh-uh, because I'm going to have blinders on because I am going to do big things just as Christ said we would, hallelujah, by him, through him, in him. And I'm not going to worry what other people are doing because that's their mission and I'm on mine. Okay. Sound good. Okay. So post on social media, take a picture of it. And I will comment if you tag me, hopefully I'll see the notification. If you're in the faith, faith fuel business, Facebook group, certainly I'm, I'm probably going to be the one to approve it. And I will respond and give you feedback. Okay. Also, I'd love feedback on what did you think about today? Like share that on social, you know, take a picture right now of us here. Um, whether you're watching it on Instagram, Facebook, or whether you're here with me on zoom, take a picture and put it out there and say, this is what I'm doing because I'm committed to the business because I am believing in the work that the Lord God has started. Right. Okay. So let's end in a, in a prayer. Heavenly father, thank you for joining us today, God. And I just pray that the words that I've spoken and, um, you know, all the good work that we've done here today, Lord, has been pleasing to you. Bless each of these beautiful ladies and their families and their businesses, Lord. Give them clarity. Help these um, nuggets of wisdom. Help them to land in their heart and in their mind, Lord, so that they can take action on it um, that will actually move the needle in their business. Help them move forward and strengthen them and empower them as decisive successful CEOs. We're going to thank you in advance for that. You are awesome. We thank you, God. We love you and we trust you. Help us to love and trust you more. It's in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, ladies, thank you for joining me. Yes, I will see you tomorrow right back here at 9 a.m. Eastern. If you are not here with me on Zoom, but you're like, wow, I wish I would have been because I missed all these things, the sharing of the screen and whatnot. Um, Yes, at Judy Weber Co. That's right, Karen. Uh, If you want to jump in, then you need to register because every morning you will be getting the workbook, even though it's the same one, I'm going to always include it in case there's any newcomers to, um, you know, to this event. Um, And this is the best place for us to really um, make some traction this week, which is what I want for you and your business. So thank you for watching. Tell a friend, tell a friend, and I will see you back here next time. God bless.